Welcome to Upticks with Jake Falcon, founder and CEO of Falcon Wealth Advisors. In this podcast, we help high net worth individuals overcome financial complexities. We do this by enhancing financial literacy and discussing topics in a language free from industry jargon. Join us as we help explain exactly what having a solid financial plan means as Jake draws from years of experience in helping hundreds of individuals get financially organized and focused on their goals. We hope you find Uptick's educational, entertaining, and shareable. Now, on to the show. Welcome back to the show. This is episode 222, How to Invest for Success in Retirement. Corey, this is our palindrome episode. Ooh, 222? You have a favorite palindrome? No, I don't. Do you? No, I mean, either. I think they're cool, though. I'm a huge fan. Something about them. Um, Frontwards and backwards. I like that. Yep. Here we are. (laughs) Uh, And thank you all to tuning in. We hope you're having a great holiday season. If you're not already subscribed to Upticks on your favorite podcast platform, I challenge you, why not? Right? So if you're listening, watching, reading this, there's three different ways you can subscribe. Uh, Either one on your favorite podcast platform. So that would be uh, Spotify or Apple. It's typically um, YouTube. We've got a great uh, video on YouTube. You feel free to subscribe there. Or you can subscribe to the Uptix email through our website at falconwealthadvisors.com. Or Corey also kicks out his own email called In the Money Insight, which does feature this show as part of his weekly newsletter he sends to clients and future clients. So thank you again for tuning in. Uh, Corey, I asked our team this yesterday and we're recording this before Thanksgiving, but it's going to roll out after Thanksgiving. So, but I'm curious, and, and maybe you already shared this, but what, what is your favorite Thanksgiving food? My favorite Thanksgiving food, it's all about the stuffing or the dressing. I don't know the difference yeah. between the two and when it's appropriate to call which one which, but that's always my favorite. Now, do you, are you a stovetop guy or are you like a homemade from scratch type of guy? Homemade from scratch, ideally. So are you and Cassie doing that or does her family do that or her family? Yeah. So we actually, we kind of started a tradition last year when my family, so my parents and my grandmother moved to Kansas city in 2021 uh, from Indiana. And we started a tradition last year actually, where we did a joint Thanksgiving uh, with Cassie's family and my family. So we're going to do that again. This will be our second annual. (laughs) Nice. So who does the stuffing though? Who is responsible for this? My in-laws are responsible for that dish. Who? My in-laws are responsible for that dish. So is it your father-in-law or your mother-in-law? I want to drill down here. Who's doing it? I think it's my mother-in-law. That's a good question. I'll I'll know know for certain tomorrow. By the time this episode rolls out, I can answer that question. (laughs) Okay, fair enough. And, you know, we're doing, we're starting uh, kind of something new with us. We've kind of been switching up our holiday traditions and it's been a lot of fun. We're creating new ones, Rachel and I. And this year, my parents are driving up from Texas. So that's real exciting. Um, and we're going to make turkey. Rachel and I are going to give it a crack and uh, make our own stuffing. I never call it dressing. I don't really get that, but stuffing. And But our tradition is actually not involved with actual Thanksgiving. Our tradition and our or my favorite part of uh, Thanksgiving food um, are leftovers, and we make turkey enchiladas. My mom has actually made them for years. She shared the recipe a while back with Rachel, so Rachel and I make them every now and then. Um, but this year, I'm excited to have my mom and my dad uh, and Rachel and Einstein, of course. And we're going to have turkey. And then the next day is really the good day, Corey. We're going to have the turkey enchiladas. Big fan. You might have a guest. I might uh, make a guest appearance at your house on Friday, Jake. To have They're pretty, are you an enchilada, enchilada guy? Enchiladas. They're pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think I we're think... all enchilada people, right? <laughs> so, no, I think they're great. And uh, it'll be a lot of fun. So thank, thank all of you again for tuning in. We hope you're having a great holiday season, like I mentioned. And certainly, Corey, we are very thankful for our team at Falcon Wealth Advisors. We're very thankful for our clients. Uh, Our practice continues to thrive, and we're bringing on new clients uh, every year. I think this year we signed up over 70 new families uh, to join our clients at Falcon Wealth Advisors. So we're very humbled and grateful, and there's a lot to be thankful for this year. So, but on to the show. So today's topic is we want to talk about how to invest for success in retirement, because Corey... You and myself, as chartered retirement planning counselors, this is something that we key in with our clients almost on a daily basis. Certainly, we're in client meetings. We're helping people prepare for 
and ultimately to retire successfully. And, and the issue is a lot of people get this wrong and a lot of people have some misconceptions and they don't understand how critical it is. Now, the most important thing is to remember, you don't have to go at this alone, but there are some very important subjects that need to be addressed. And that's why we wanted to talk about it on today's show. So I've got my notes right over here. Um, but a, a point I wanted to make, and I'm not looking to scare anybody, is that if you get this wrong, Corey, so again, if the, if the client is investing wrong as they approach and get into retirement, they literally can cost themselves and their families thousands and thousands and thousands, if not millions of dollars. So it's very important that you get this investment piece correct. We always talk about financial planning at Falcon Wealth Advisors. That's only half of it. The other half is making sure you're actually executing on the investments. So Corey, I'll let you kick off one of our first topics here that we want to talk about. And you want to lead in here with the two most important, you know, big items to consider when you're investing for success in retirement. And Corey, why don't you lay them out there? Yeah. Two most important considerations to invest for success in retirement. One, growth of your assets to last your lifetime. And two, short-term access to these dollars to cover your monthly income needs. Right. Yeah. So to start off with number one, growth, right? Many people think that retirement is the finish line. Okay, Corey, I've saved up $2 million. You're telling me my financial plan looks good. I'm going to cash it all in, put it in savings or a stable value fund and not do anything else with it. Um, that's a big problem and a huge mistake. Um, so hopefully your retirement lasts three decades, if not longer. And so like you mentioned, you have to have a growth component um, unless there's only one caveat here, unless you have so much money, let's say you have $30 million and you only live off a hundred thousand a year. Well, then you probably don't need growth. Um, but I would argue someone in that situation would probably benefit from growth even more because now we're setting up generational wealth and we're not looking at just your retirement, for example. So that's a whole nother topic for another show, but growth is very important. So you've got to have this growth component. And in our opinion, one of the most efficient ways to do that is to buy publicly traded companies and, and let their growth of their earnings help you grow your retirement. Good. Did I miss anything there on the growth piece? No, that's very good. Good. And then the second piece, right, was what? Short-term access. Right. So this Fun. is Make very sure critical. Make sure they cover your expenses. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So you don't want to have too much money in growth assets because while we, as we all know, in 2022 here, you can have volatile markets. And so you got to make sure that you've got that monthly income set up. Uh, you got to have enough cash to meet your bills and your lifestyle. And then you got to have enough short-term liquidity, like you mentioned, uh, so that your one, three, five-year goals aren't dependent upon the stock market, right? So we use the yin and the yang here. We want, uh, want some of your money in long-term growth so that your retirement grows from 2 million to 3 million to 5 million. And we need to have that short-term liquidity accessibility there and, and somewhat safer um, so that you don't have to worry about, you know, I don't want a client to call me, Jake, the Dow's down 500 points. Can I go buy a turkey? Like that's no way to live. You shouldn't be living that way. And so that's why it's so critical that you've got both of these, the yin and the yang, uh, built out here. Anything that I missed there, Corey, or that we missed? No, I don't think so. I think that's a good job covering why it really, the retirement's not the finish line. Like you said, it's the starting point for the next chapter, right? For the next several decades. So getting this right is important. And when someone goes from working and earning a paycheck to retiring and spending the money they saved, it's really important, like you've said, Jake, to really get this right. Yeah. And it's very scary for people. And I want to talk real quick about that, the emotional side of it, because that spigot gets turned off, right? And that's, that's probably one of the number one concerns that I hear as I'm helping clients transition into retirement is like, Jake, I'm used to making a paycheck. Now I am nervous because I don't have a paycheck. And that's why, again, we're getting at, you need to have a growth component to your portfolio and a short-term income liquidity component. And if we can marry the two of those together, hopefully that's going to set you up for successful investing in your retirement. Excellent. All right, good. So, okay, so we know that, right? So maybe that's a little obvious to some clients. Like, hey, Corey, I know I got to grow my portfolio and I know I need short-term uh, liquidity or accessibility. How do, what should my allocation be? How do you answer this question, Corey? Really the 
I mean, the allocation piece for an individual investor, for a family who's going into retirement, I think it it's really largely driven by cash flow needs. Back to the income piece that we talked about earlier. The way that we like to set it up for clients who are going to retire and be living off of their dollars is ideally for them to have five, if not 10 years of liquidity or short-term cash flow access invested in bonds outside of the stock market. So the idea is... And this is really to cover any distributions that may supplement Social Security, that may supplement pensions, but making sure that there's the appropriate amount set aside to really allow you know market cycles to ebb and flow the way they're going to, because we can't control that. So your retirement is not impacted by market conditions if it's set up appropriately. Right. Yeah, that's very good. And let's do a little bit of math here. So yeah. let's say that somebody is retired, Corey, and they've determined that they need 50000 a year from their investments. Now they may be getting social security, they may be getting a pension, so they're actually living off 70, 80 or 100,000 whatever it is. But let's just say for portfolio construction purposes, they need 50,000 a year. If we send that to them, they're going to be good cash flow wise and their financial plan works. So what you're suggesting is then at a minimum, we would we would advise that we need to have at least $250,000 of their investment portfolio in bonds, which I'll, I'll zoom in on bonds here a little bit and, and talk a little bit more about what that means. So that would be our kind of our line where we draw the lines like, look, we got to have at least this. And then we kind of work in some of their other goals or other issues. And, and maybe that goes anywhere from 250 all the way up to 500,000. Somewhere in that range, we feel confident um, that their short term liquidity needs are going to be net. Now, bonds carry their own risk and they do fluctuate. But what's beautiful about bonds is they also generate income, right? And they pay out interest. So their volatility, at least the types of bonds that we buy, which are called investment grade, are typically less volatile than the stock market, and they pay typically nice interest payments. And so by having this five to 10 year bond allocation for our clients, we are, at, we are able to weather recessions, inflation, you know, pandemics through different market cycles, because on average, from peak to trough, a market cycle is five years. Um, so again, we want to have at least one to two years of cycles in there. And there's other things we can do with the stocks and, and so forth. So it's not that rigid. But the idea is that if we have at least five, if not 10, set up in, in some sort of fixed income allocation, and we like bonds, then our clients should, and they don't always, but they should have confidence knowing that they have the short-term liquidity accessibility available to them. Yeah. And I think that, you know, we, I, we'd probably be remiss to not mention that, you know, frankly, longevity and risk tolerance uh, are, you know, are taken into consideration here uh, for clients. But really what we want to drive with is what you've just laid out and described, making sure the cat short-term cash flow needs can be met with funds that are outside of the stock market. But what that really means, back to your original question, Jake, when you said what allocation is appropriate, it depends. Right. It, for one for one person, it might mean that they need 40 percent of their portfolio in equities and 60 percent in bonds. For someone else, they might need 80 percent of their equity and 80 percent of their portfolio in equities and 20 percent in bonds. Right. So that, that's a good point. So we can't just throw out an allocation. It shouldn't be half and half, 50 50. What we care about is this bond allocation. Now, a quick side note, Corey, and I think you did this also. So early in my career, I used to let client risk tolerance dictate that allocation far more than I do today. And it's just because of my, oh, we'll call it wisdom, Corey, right? <laughs> my wisdom in 16 sure. years, I realized that I can coach clients through their behavioral biases. I don't want though their fear or greed, which is what that uh, risk tolerance really is. It's fear or greed. It's how scared are you? Or how greedy are you? That's really what's driving a lot of people's risk tolerance. But I don't let that dictate the allocation. As fiduciaries to our clients, we want to do what's in their best interest. So that's why our clients don't fill out some lengthy risk tolerance questionnaire that I think some advisors use because I don't, frankly, that doesn't matter to me because I'm going to tell them what they should be invested in according to what their financial plan says and what's in their best interest. And I will coach them through the risk tolerance piece. I would much rather do that than someone come into my office, Corey, and say, oh, I'm aggressive. I want to make a ton of money, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, we just listen to them and we make them too aggressive and then their plan blows up, right? Or they're too conservative and they're like, oh, I'm really scared. I don't want to lose any money. 
So then we put all their money in cash and bonds and then they don't grow and then they run out of money. And so what are we doing? So, so I think it's important for our clients. That's one of our differentiators actually is that we, we, we want to hear what your risk tolerance is as a client, but we're going to tell you because that's what you're paying us for what we think is in your best interest. And then we're going to set up your allocation appropriately and how we go about doing that is having five to 10 years worth of bonds. Didn't you used to do that too, Corey? And you probably took my lead, but did did you used to do that early in your career? I did. I did. And I've learned that, well, I've learned a few things. I've learned a lot of things, but what I've really <laughs> learned about uh, the allocation specifically, one is that, um, you know, maybe it's an uncomfortable truth for people, but uh, risk tolerance changes, right? And I think that just people's sentiment towards their investments change. In other words, when the market's having a great run and things are going well, I've noticed that people describe themselves as aggressive. When the market's doing poorly and things are down, people describe themselves as conservative, right? Your sentiment changes when the value of your portfolio changes, which I think you could, you could until we're blue in the face, go through an extreme analytical uh, evaluation of someone's risk tolerance. But the reality is, until you are in the situation and faced with the circumstances at, ha at hand, people just frankly don't know, especially when they're making this big transition into retirement anyway. And a, a, I think a way to think about it or a way to put it, and I've had clients almost ex explicitly tell this to me is, Corey, I don't know what my risk tolerance is. I don't know how aggressive I should be. That's part of why I'm here talking to you. Right, right. Very good. Yeah. So that, that's exactly right. And again, you don't want, because again, if you if we're investing according to your risk tolerance, like you said, your risk tolerance is going to change. So then we start changing your investments and then your financial plan gets all out of order. So yep. I'm not saying you can't change and you can be opportunistic and do different things. Sure. What I'm saying though, is you shouldn't let your emotion do that. And, and that's what you're paying us and hiring us for. So again, we, we ask the question just because I want to know, because I, I want to know my clients. But I don't let that being a leading indicator of how we're going to manage your money. We're going to do it based on this five to 10 year strategy that's worked quite well, in my opinion, for our clients. Now, real quick, before we go on to the next topic here with investing for success in retirement, I'm zeroing in on those bonds. So again, just to, to quickly summarize on those bonds, and it's a whole topic for another show, but we, we do what's called a bond ladder. Uh, we have short-term bonds in there that are typically U.S. Treasuries. We'll buy corporate bonds. We'll buy municipal bonds. So it is very diversified, in our opinion, and you're having bonds mature all the time. And so we can set up different bonds to mature based on different goals. So that's a whole other topic for a show. But I just wanted to point out there that it's not a bond fund. We're not using a product. We're not using an annuity. We're literally managing your bonds as an active strategy, as another component to your financial plan to solve for your short-term liquidity. So you can have money next month to go buy a turkey, right? Or you can go on that vacation or, or buy a car or whatever it is that you're looking to accomplish with your capital. Okay, good. So the next one, I got my notes over here, like I mentioned, Corey. So what type of investments? Oh, that's a perfect segue. So what types? So I already talked about the bond component. So again, five to 10 years, we want to have cash. We want to have treasury bonds, corporate bonds, municipal bonds, maybe even some preferred stocks in there, which aren't bonds and aren't stocks, but they pay good dividends typically. So that is the allocation for the short term. Corey, maybe you can talk about um, what are some of the investments for the long-term bucket here? This, uh, this piece, the long-term bucket, really the growth aspect is going to be your equities or your stocks. Um, and you know the way that we go about doing this is by buying individual companies. You, you said this earlier, Jake, and I like the way that you phrased it, where you said, let's let a company's growing earnings contribute to your growing portfolio. And that's exactly right. Uh, so we buy individual companies for clients um, in their portfolios. So everybody has transparency into what they own. And so we have control over how the money is invested. But the stock side of the portfolio is what uh, our expectation is going to provide the long-term growth. But like we've said, we know that it can get volatile. And that's why the uh, cash fixed income bond element is going to be important too. Right. And I think this has been very critical in a year, particularly like 2022. Uh, when clients see that the broad market is down, right? We'll pull up their performance and they're not down nearly as much in many cases. And it's because, again, we're buying individual stocks so we can really laser in. Like I like that you said we have control, transparency. It's typically lower cost because we're not using products. You know, I don't need to go buy an, a mutual fund or an annuity or hire some money manager that doesn't know my client, doesn't care about my client, and is looking just to get paid off the money of the management. What we want to do is we want to answer to our clients but since our clients are going to hold us accountable, we want to be the decision maker. And we actually have a team of three investment professionals that they don't, 
they don't have clients per se. They have all of our clients. And so we literally will take your financial plan, have an investment strategy that, that we've outlaid to the client. And then our investment management group will monitor and trade and watch us. And we buy 35 stocks because mathematically speaking, that's what you need technically to be diversified. They're, they're diversified in large cap, small cap, mid cap, international commodities like gold and oil, real estate. So we, we feel very diversified there. And they're monitoring it on a daily basis. And then we talk about it every week or we have investment meetings every month, right? Or they're meeting about it every week and we're talking about whatever. We're always lasered in on that. You know, if something needs to change, we won't hesitate to make a change or rebalance or buy low and sell high. So again, we're monitoring that from a growth component. And as one other overlay, talking about the investments, for clients that are eligible and that are qualified, we will uh, trade options. And that's just another way to generate income, particularly for a retiree. And again, I don't want to go into the details of options. That's beyond the scope of this episode. Um, but just know that there's basically three components at Falcon Wealth Advisors that we use for um, most of our clients, not all of them. Most clients have a bond and a stock, and then some have this options component. And then we're managing that portfolio that lines up with your financial plan. Now, real quick, before we move on, Jake, one thing that you did not mention that's part of that investment allocation for someone investing for success in retirement is cryptocurrency or venture capital or private equity. Um, the list can go on and on. Can you just speak to that? Yeah, thank you for bringing that up, Corey. So, uh, you know, we are not speculators. Um, our clients um, are high net worth individuals. Um which means they typically have a million dollars or more in investable assets. Usually it's one to 25 million and they don't need to go out there and chase the hot fad of today for them to hit their goals. Um, so uh, today cryptocurrency doesn't make sense in a portfolio for our clients. It's too risky, too speculative. And you've seen, you know, this major exchange is FTX was the name of it. I mean, they're, that guy basically was taking clients crypto and using it for his own hedge fund. And like, I don't know how he's not in huge trouble, but whatever, maybe maybe that's coming. But um, again, we don't want to get wrapped up in some unregulated wild, wild west. We're not gambling here. That's not who we that's not who we're working with. Now, Corey, if you and I were working with a bunch of 20 year olds that were speculating, um, Sure, maybe we would be crypto guys, but that's not our clients. That's not what we're doing here. We're fiduciaries to our clients. We're managing real capital, right? High net worth individuals, and they don't need to chase that. Or we're not going to chase their retirement with that. So again, we don't mess around with NFTs, cryptocurrency. Um, we're not buying a bunch of pot stocks. Like we're just we're just staying away from all that risk um, because there's a lot of really good companies that you can invest in and grow your portfolio. And, and do well. I mean, look at Warren Buffett. I mean, you know, again, that guy, he's probably one of the best investors of all time. And he's not, he hasn't chased fads. In fact, for many years, Corey, I don't even think he liked technology, which is crazy, right? Not crazy. I mean, he's been successful, but uh, I mean, that's how, and we're not, and we're not that extreme, but my point is there's a lot of ways to make money and you don't have to worry about what your neighbor, sister's cousin's dog made in crypto and think you can do the same thing because it doesn't work that way. You often hear about people when they make money, but they are very, uh, very far and few between that they tell you when they actually lose it. So I bet all these crypto people out here, they're not out there saying, oh, I lost 50%. They're not talking about it right now, right? But that's what's happening, right? In many cases, not in all, but many. So thank you for that. But you're right. We're not messing around with any of that. We'll look at it. We'll talk about it with you. And we'll talk you through it. We're not just going to dismiss it. But for our clients, they don't need to do those things to hit their goals. Very so, good. All right, good. So and I've got it here. Uh, some good, a good fun part now to our section is let's talk about some common do's and don'ts. So, Cor, I'll let you start. You can pick a do or a don't. I'll start with the do's. Um, what I have, one, one thing that you do want to do uh, is, is review with your fiduciary advisor, your financial plan and your investment allocation to ensure that those two are continuing to stay aligned as life happens and as, and as things change with your circumstances. That's really good, Corey, because people get panicked by the media. They get panicked by their friends and family, especially around the holidays. If you're nervous, let's meet. If you have a question, let's meet. If you want to revisit your financial plan or change something, let's meet. That's why we are here. 
We have a team of 15 professionals. We actually have four people in our financial planning group. So again, we can set up a call. We can do a Zoom. We can meet in person. Uh, we are here for our clients and, and that's what we do. So let's do this. Thing. I love that. Let's do that. Do meet with your planner. I got to do for you. Do remain flexible. Understand, I, you know, and I, I get on my soapbox with this a little bit, but a financial plan is not a roadmap. It's not. It, the, a lot of these other uh, advisors out there, which I like what they say here, they'll say the minute you create a financial plan, it's already wrong. And that's because life is dynamic and change. The market's moving, your, your goals are moving, taxes are changing, you know, all kinds of stuff is going into this financial plan. And it's not a predictable, it's not designed to um, be this rigid, okay, you told me in 2025, I was going to have $1.73 million. Is it there? It doesn't work yeah. that way. It's not going to work that way. And and, and uh, Jake Cross, one of our financial planners on our team, I think he does a good job in our meetings. He'll tell clients and remind them, let's not get fixed on the end number. Let's look at the trajectory of the plan. Are you comfortable cash flow wise? And is the plan moving in the direction that it's comfortable to you? Some clients the plan may be running out and they're fine with that. Some it may be level and some it may be growing, but let's let's show you that trajectory and let's look at that. But understand that you do need to remain flexible, right? You can't be this rigid, you know, by the book. It's got, you've got to understand that life changes, markets change, people change. So let's remain flexible. Let's remain open to having conversations about your plan so that we can give you the most confidence to invest successfully in retirement. Good, Corey, do you have another do or are we onto the don'ts? I have one more do, and it, it maybe it's, well, it is aligned with what you just said, Jake, but I'm just going to kind of phrase it a different way. Uh, one of the notes that I made in kind of preparing for today's show was recognize that investing for success in retirement is going to look different at age 60 than it is going to look at age 80 or 85. Absolutely. Yeah. So like I just commented on your, your life and your plan will change uh, and your retirement goals will change. Uh, so we'll have to change the plan. And again, um, but don't think that your portfolio necessarily is going to be conservative at 80. I think is you know, another important piece. It'll just be different, right? Exactly. You could have, let's say at 80, you have no bills, you know, other than your heating electric, you're healthy, but you've already traveled the world and you're sitting on two or $3 million and you're not really pulling much money out of your accounts, maybe just the requirement of distributions. Some would argue then that maybe your account needs to be more aggressive because now you're investing it for your heirs. You're not investing it for yourself anymore. And your kids are in their 50s, right? So why would you have, why would an 80 year old with $3 million who's not pulling from it have it all in bonds, for example? That would be silly because again, they're not investing for themselves, it's for their kids and, and their kids are only 50 and their kids are still working. Let's go grow it for them so they can inherit more one day. So again, but it does look different, Corey. You're absolutely right because your life changes. That's a good one. Yep. Uh, I think a don't for me would be um, don't think um, that, again, I, I kind of commented on this in the beginning, that retirement is the finish line. So don't cash out all your money and, and put it in, in stable value or whatnot when you retire, because, again, you're going to miss out on that growth component. So uh, I wouldn't get caught up in um, what you read or hear on the television. Um, you understand that your financial plan is custom. So I guess that's my don't is that don't think that there's a cookie cutter way to invest for retirement then it needs to be built out to your plan. Do you have a don't, Corey? Yeah, I don't tie your identity as a person to the value of your portfolio. Because if you Ooh. do this, in all likelihood, you're probably not ever going to spend the money that you worked hard to save, which sort of negates the point in saving it in the first place. That's a good one, yeah. So don't tie your own worth to your net worth. I like that one, Corey. That's pretty good. Yeah. I don't know if I've heard that one out of you before, but yeah, you're right. And that you're going to be disappointed. Or again, you might, you're, you might let life pass you by and not enjoy it. So that's a, that's a good one. Yep. What? Um, you know, I think another, another don't for me would be um, don't get caught up again in the hysteria of things like don't let your emotions dictate. I mean, we could probably go on and on for these don'ts, but I think, I think key is don't think that it's cookie cutter and that your portfolio needs to look like everybody else's. I like yours. Don't get, don't attach your ego or your identity to your net worth. And then um, don't let, don't get caught up in the hysteria or emotions. Um, understand that you've got a fiduciary. If you hired a fiduciary, they're supposed to be out there for your best interest. Talk to them when you have questions or concerns. You got another one as we wrap up our show here? Uh, yeah, the last one that I have, just to kind of be explicit about it, and we don't need to go into too much detail because I know it'll be more for a future show, but don't 
get sold an annuity without understanding the ins and the outs of it, particularly in a market environment like the one that we've had this year. Uh, my experience has been that when things get more turbulent in the market is when the uh, the annuity sales discussions seem to kind of spike. Uh, and I think that people conceptually like the idea of a personal pension uh, or they like the idea of not having to worry about stock market volatility. But again, my experience is that very few people buy annuities. The reality is people get sold annuities. And in my experience over the last you know 10 to 15 years now, 10 to 13 years, I guess I should say, is that far more often we're helping people undo an annuity that someone sold them in the past versus recommending one for them and their family in the future. Yeah, these annuity salesmen, they're the slickest, smoothest talkers. They're your best friend uh, because they get paid a huge commission and then they disappear and they go on and they sell to the next sucker. Um, it's okay if you buy one, if you fully understand everything about yes. it. And I would challenge a lot of annuity salesmen don't know everything about them. So um, if you understand what you're getting into and what you're signing up for, sure, I guess. We don't like them at all at Falcon Wealth Advisors, but there is probably a need for them or a market for them. But like you said, Corey, I mean, nine times out of 10, when a client comes in or a new client comes in that have been sold, like you said, an annuity, they're not happy. They don't understand it. Uh, and it hasn't performed like they were uh, told it would perform. So um, yeah, be careful on those annuities. You're right. When market volatility, like years like this, annuity salesmen start to creep up and and they get more mainstream. Yep. Perfect. So for my last quick section here, I want to answer this question, Corey. So we talked about a lot here, right? How to, how to invest for success in retirement. Can somebody do this on their own? Why would, why would they need to hire someone? Can somebody do this without an advisor? Yes, someone can do this without an advisor. The requirement from my perspective is they need to get real about the amount of work that is required to do it successfully and also really answer the question around whether or not they have the stomach to execute upon it. Yeah, that, that's that's right. You can absolutely do it, but I just want to understand when, when you sign up as a client with Falcon Wealth Advisors, what you're getting is the financial planning. So that's all, all the organization and consolidation and making sure you understand how your net worth is structured. You're getting the retirement planning, which is, you know, where do you pull from? Do you pull from your IRA, brokerage, Roth, uh, Roth IRA? Do you turn on Social Security, Medicare, all the stuff that goes into retirement planning? And then you get the tax planning. How can we pay the least amount to Uncle Sam that we're owed? And then the investments is a full time. Literally, I've got traders in there watching the market all day from an unemotional, detached standpoint. They're just using math to make their decisions. It's all math based. And they're not, there's no subjectivity here. So if you're willing to be versed on all the financial planning, tax laws, retirement, and you want to watch the market all day and make unemotional decisions, have that. I get it. I love doing this for clients and our team. I think they love doing it as well. And so, but you can do it on your own, but just recognize that's what you're signing up for. Just like Corey, I, I'm going to say this, but it's probably, I probably can't. I probably could change the engine in my car. I probably could do that. <laughs> if I if I watch I enough YouTube videos and I buy the equipment and I understand it probably take me weeks to get it right, I probably could. Am I going to do that? No. And luckily, I don't need a new engine. But you know, I probably could do it. But I'd probably much rather pay someone to do it. So again, it's what do you it's what do you want to do? And don't and and what's interesting to me, Corey, is a lot of people take this lightly. You know, and it's just, we're talking about your 30 year career plus your nest egg, all the pennies you've saved, you're just gonna throw it in a index fund or just go to some guy and buy an annuity because he was nice to you and you, you met him through church or golf or whatever. And you're just gonna trust him. And it's like, I don't know, to me, it's, it's far more important and uh, it pays to have somebody that's in your corner. It pays to have a team, an ensemble team like us at Falcon Authorized. Our clients are getting 15 professionals for the price of one, right? It's all working and working full. And frankly, Corey, you and I couldn't manage it on our own. You know, no. so we, we need a team just to help advise, uh, help us advise our clients. And so anyways, I hope maybe it's a whole other topic for your show. So you can do it alone. Just recognize what you're signing up for is a pretty large endeavor. Um, and I don't think, uh, I don't think a do-it-yourselfer is going to get the same level of service um, oversight and management that you can get at Falcon Wealth Advisors. And I don't think a solo advisor can do what we can do, frankly. I don't even think a small, I don't even think if you had an advisor that had an assistant or two assistants can do what we do because we got 15 people here working for our clients. 
So, yeah. And I think the last thing, just to add real quickly to that, Jake, I mean, for, you know, clients and uh, future clients watching and listening to this episode is that, I mean, you and I, right? This is who we are. This is what we do. We are advisors. We've worked together for many years now, but both of us, we have financial plans that are established. We meet in review with the financial planners. Joe, who works closely with me, I, I reviewed with him my financial plan where he effectively was my advisor. And our investment management team is managing our retirement accounts uh, just the same way. So my point is, this is who we are and what we do. And we're still leaning on the team of professionals that we've hired to do this for ourselves, the same way that we lean on that team of professionals to help take care of our clients. Right. That's that's exactly right. That's great. And, and obviously, you understand your plan, but it it, it serves two purposes. It gets an, an unemotional look at your plan. Uh, and then it's good training for Joe, frankly, right? So then when he's going out meeting with clients, he's, you know, he's getting more reps under his belt and looking at different types of financial plans and, and giving advice. So that's great. It's exactly right, though. You're right. We do lean on our team and the team leans on us, right? And that's what we're here for. So, yep. so that's good. So thank you, Corey, as our, our resident guest for joining me. Thank you all for tuning in. As always, if you have additional questions on how to invest for success in your retirement, email me directly at jake at falconwealthadvisors.com. You can email Corey at Corey at falconwealthadvisors.com. That's C-O-R-Y. Uh, and thank you again for tuning in. We hope you have a happy holiday and a great week. Thank you for listening to Upticks. Click the subscribe button to be notified when new episodes become available. Also, be sure to visit our website, falconwealthadvisors.com, and click the Contact Us button if you'd like to meet with Jake and his team.